Good morning, everybody. I'm meteorologist Bo Dotson. It is Tuesday, December 20th, 2022. If you like all of this weather data, then be sure and subscribe to the Bo Dotson Weather app and Bo Dotson Weather Talk. You do that at weathertalk.com and you can receive the rapid fire tornado alerts, the ice storm alerts, the winter storm alerts, the videos, the daily blog, a daily forecast. You can subscribe to receiving social media alerts. When I update Facebook or the blog, I send you a message. When I update the video, I send you an app message. Do all of that at weathertalk.com and then download the Bodots and Weather app. It's in the app stores under Weather Talk. All right, winter storm is coming. And all of the available data continues to increase snow totals. But first, let's talk about the cold. Very cold air coming down the pike. We look up here in Canada this morning and we still see minus 50s, minus 30s, minus 40s. And those are now reaching into the United States. Look here in Montana, minus 30 on the border there, minus 31 in North Dakota. That is the source of the cold air that is pushing into our region over the coming days, thankfully it will modify, modify some, but we are expecting temperatures to drop below zero in some of our forecast counties and in the single digits elsewhere. If we have a deep snowpack, if we end up with more snow than expected, then some areas could dip to minus 5 to minus 10 with actual air temperatures. Wind chill values could touch minus 20 degrees Thursday night into Friday and Friday night. This is a bitterly cold air mass. We call this an Arctic outbreak. That's what meteorologists call it, as this air is coming straight from the Arctic into our region. This happens every so many years, and when it does, we end up with bitterly cold air. Let's take a look at some of the data. I know you're wondering what is going on with the models today. We're watching them roll in this morning. Overnight data, yesterday's data, Everything continues to point to this low tracking further south and southeast. Now, I talked about that as a possibility in my other videos, that if that were to happen, that we would then increase snow totals. And that is what is happening. Now, for now, the National Weather Service has held off on watches and warnings. But, let's refresh this. Winter storm watches are now as close as St. Louis into central Illinois northern and central indiana this lighter blue those are wind chill advisory watches perhaps going to have some wind chill warnings out of this we'll see but i expect winter storm watches warnings or winter weather advisories to be issued for much of our region for thursday late afternoon into thursday night and friday morning now that's up to the national weather service but i do expect those to be issued they probably will do that tonight or tomorrow morning usually they like to hold off a little bit until certainty increases but expect some type of advisories watches or warnings in our local area now let's go to the models you're wondering about the timing because i know many of you have travel activities coming because of the holidays I'm encouraging everyone to wrap up their activities by early Thursday afternoon. Now, you may have a little bit more time than that. Let's look at the model data. This is the high resolution NAM. Here comes the bitterly cold air. Let's back it up here to noon. At noon Thursday, we're going to be in the 40s in western Kentucky. St. Louis, 19 degrees, Mount Vernon, 40. 40 in Mount Vernon, 19 in St. Louis, 12, 10, 8 minus 2 this is an extremely sharp gradient of temperatures temperatures will fall 20 to 30 degrees in a matter of one to two hours behind this front rain will develop ahead of the front when that cold air arrives i don't need to tell you what's going to happen whatever moisture is left on roadways that's going to freeze any precipitation falling is going to stick Let's move forward in time. We stop here at around 3 o'clock. We see the front knocking on Carbondale's door, Cape Girardeau, Poplar Bluff. Now, give or take an hour or two here. This is a model. We're threading a needle on the timing, but you're wanting to know when to wrap up your activity, so I'm giving you some ideas here. I would be done with everything. Your holiday shopping, your food shopping, whatever you need to do running errands by early Thursday afternoon. You may indeed have until Thursday evening, but just to be on a safe side. Now, let's stop here at 6 o'clock Thursday. Evansville, Indiana, 
front has arrived. Paducah down into the teens already. Keep in mind, we may actually hit 50 degrees in some counties Thursday afternoon. 10 degrees in Carbondale and Cape Girardeau and Poplar Bluff at 6 p.m. Thursday. Massive temperature drop. This is an amazing blast of cold air that will push across our region. Combine that with wind chills of minus 10 to minus 20 degrees. It is going to be brutal out there for animals, for pets, for livestock. Frostbite threat will definitely be an issue. If it does snow and your kids are outdoors playing Friday and Saturday, bundle them up. Frostbite is a high risk with temperatures like this. It does not take long for those tips of the fingers to get frostbite in these type of conditions. Speaking of winds, high winds are likely with this system. 20, 30 miles an hour are a given possibly gust above 40 miles per hour. Combine that with falling snow Thursday night and you could have whiteout conditions. Near blizzard conditions are possible where snow falls moderately or you get two or three or four inches of snow. That blowing snow, if you're out Thursday night trying to drive in that, it could be near impossible driving conditions in some counties if this all comes together as forecast. Some of the data even shows wind gusts above 45 miles per hour Thursday night. This is Thursday at 9 p.m., 12 a.m., Friday morning, and you see numerous gusts 30 to 40 miles per hour, perhaps higher. Again, combine that with snow. You're going to have blowing snow, drifting snow. Anywhere it accumulates more than two or three or four inches, you're going to have quite a bit of blowing and drifting snow and near whiteout conditions possible with this event. Let's take a look at precipitation. Now, it will warm up Thursday. Keep that in mind. We are forecasting rain ahead of the front. Not a lot of rain, perhaps a tenth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Hopefully not enough, hopefully not enough to wash off the salt and brine. Let's stop here at about noon. You see rain showers developing over the area. And then you see that quick change over to 5, 10, 15 minutes of freezing rain and sleet and then all snow. We'll stop here at 6 p.m. Snow, some of it heavy falling over the area. And then it quickly moves out. By Friday morning, we'll stop here. There's 12 a.m. There's 6 a.m. Friday morning. Maybe some snow flurries remaining, clouds, gusty winds. We'll see where the low tracks. Now, the trend has been to track the low a bit further south and east and develop it deeper as it moves into Ohio versus Indiana. Now, a lot of the models still show the track through southeast Missouri and in Indiana. Other models are showing the track into Tennessee, Kentucky, and then Ohio. The trend, and I always tell you the trend is what's important, the trend in the guidance has been east-southeast for the last 24 to 48 hours. All of the data has trended south and east with the track of the low. That increases our chance of snow. Now, my going forecast has been 1 to 3 inches of snow. Uh, that still is my forecast, but I may need to increase it uh, 2 to 4 inches. Locally, higher totals are possible. Some of the data is showing as much as 6 inches in some counties. Can't rule that out, but to be safe, a 1 to 4 inch snowfall forecast uh, seems appropriate. Again, combine that with blowing snow, drifting snow, high winds, bitterly cold air. It is not going to be great driving conditions as we move through Thursday evening and night. You'll want to wrap up all of your holiday activities and move indoors with some hot cocoa and chocolate and coffee and whatever. Sit in front of the fireplace and just stay out of this cold air. The cold air will linger into the weekend. Low temperatures Thursday night in the single digits. Low temperatures Friday night, single digits below zero in some counties. Highs in the teens Saturday. Highs around 20, 25 on Sunday. If we have a deep snowpack, could be a little colder Sunday. Another system moves in. Let's just switch over here real quick. Another system approaches the area Monday and Monday night. That's a fast-moving, what we call a clipper and that could bring some additional snow accumulation to the area right now a bit early to know if it will be a dusting to one to three inches or how that plays out but it is something that i'm watching that would also cause additional travel problems early next week the good news is that sunday simply looks cold uh, with sunshine highs likely into the 20s perhaps teens upper teens middle 20s somewhere in there uh, still some gusty winds around but nothing like what we're going to experience thursday and friday all right, so don't forget to also subscribe to JP's Traffic app. That will give you travel conditions. You can find that also on the JP's Traffic Facebook page. 
Remember all of our outdoor friends during this cold spell. If it's cold for you, it's cold for them. Keep that in mind. Plan on a white Christmas over much of the area. Confidence in the forecast has now risen to 60%. I'm now 60% confident on the snow portion of the forecast. Yesterday it was 40%. 60% today, 100% confident on the cold. The cold is coming. Snow appears more and more likely. It's just a matter of how much snow, whether it's a dusting or two to three inches. If you have a little bit of water left on the roads and there's a flash freeze, you combine that with a hint of snow or several inches of snow, that is going to cause slick, hazardous driving conditions Thursday late afternoon, more likely Thursday night into Friday. We'll let the road crews do their job. Give them some room. They are out and about. Many of you have told me. We're also having a Facebook Live tonight. This is something new I'm going to try. I've never done this before, but we'll do a Facebook Live version of the Milk and Cookies with Bo. It's 7 o'clock tonight. That'll be on the Bo Dotson Weather Facebook page. Just go to Facebook and type in Bo Dotson Weather. You'll find me there, and I can answer your questions. I'll do my best to answer your questions on that Facebook Live as well. By then, I'll have quite a bit of more data available. We'll see how this morning's data trends. If the trends continue then I suspect the Weather Service is going to have to pull the trigger on issuing some type of winter storm watches, warnings, or winter weather advisory. Some type of travel impacts are likely from this event. Blizzard warnings are possible across portions of Missouri and Illinois, probably to our north. Um, but if you are traveling Thursday night, I don't recommend it. If you have to go to Chicago, many of you have been asking about Chicago. Airlines, there will be significant airline impacts over a large section of the central United States, eastern United States from this event. A widespread travel impacts as well Thursday into the weekend. I would adjust your travel plans accordingly just to be safe. And as far as road closures, if blizzard conditions do develop over portions of the Ohio and Missouri Valley, then there could be some road closures. Even some brief interstate closures can't be ruled out at the peak of this storm, especially if there's some accidents. We have seen that happen locally with several inches of snow where a truck has a wreck on the interstate and then snow piles up and cars are lined up hundreds deep. That's happened numerous times over western Kentucky, actually on I-24. If you have an accident somewhere up here in central northern Illinois or wherever, and then the snow continues to fall and you get blowing snow, that can cause roads to close. So again, I do recommend you adjust your travel plans accordingly. Either leave earlier, Wednesday, Thursday morning, or hold off until after the storm is over, let the road crews do their job, and then make your travel plans. All right, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. We'll update the video later today again. That's it for now. I'll be watching the morning data. Find me over on Facebook. I've got a thread over there. You can ask me questions. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Have a good morning. If you're not a WeatherTalk subscriber, then go to www.weathertalk.com and sign up. Your subscription gets you the videos. It gets you into the weather blog, the daily weather blog. It gets you short and long-range Missouri and Ohio Valley outlooks, the long-range agricultural outlooks. You get app messages for severe weather, winter storms, ice storms. You get the daily forecast, all of that. Just go to weathertalk.com.